Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 16. The Word of God today from the King James text reads, And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? As though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his Son, Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. Verse 16 and his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong. Whom ye see and know, yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. If you bow your heads with me one more moment, King Jesus, Lord, the hour has come when the Word of God must go forth. No preacher of the gospel is of any benefit to you. No preacher of the gospel is of any benefit to the people of God except he or she humble themselves in your mighty presence and recognize the important function to which we now set our hand. Master, the word of God is quick. It is sharp. It is powerful. It is able today to do mighty, miraculous, wonderful things. But for these things to come about, it must be the sword of the Spirit, meaning the Spirit of God must be wielding it. The Spirit of God must be handling it. The Spirit of God must be delivering it. And the messenger is only to be that vessel through which and by which the Spirit of God delivers a word to the people of God. Anoint today, O oh God, your servant. Help me to benefit the people of God. I love the message you've given me today. I love the word, oh God, you've placed in my spirit. I want so desperately, Lord, to be able to deliver it to the people of God as you delivered it to me, that it might benefit them and bring forth fruit in their lives unto righteousness. Help me to do so. Prepare our hearts, our minds, our spirit today to receive that which the spirit would sow for we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful, precious name. Amen. amen. Praise God and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, the Word of God warns us that in the last days there would be a powerful movement in opposition to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you shall be delivered unto kings and princes. You shall be delivered up in the synagogues for my name's sake. There is one thing, there is one part of the gospel today that Satan hates, that Satan despises more than any other portion of the gospel and that is that portion which reveals to the church the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
There are some today who accuse the apostolic movement of which we are a part, small part, but we are a part of that great movement. There are those today who would accuse us apostolics of being obsessed with the name Jesus. And today I tell you proudly with a big old smile on my face, Oh, yes, I am. Hallelujah. Obsessed with the name. I want to tell you today, my friend, that's the title of my message that God has given me for this hour, Obsessed with the Name. Immediately following the healing of the lame man at the gate of the temple that was called Beautiful, Peter and John respond to onlookers with the words that we find today in our primary text. They point the amazed audience to not only the man Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of God's promise for a Messiah, but they point as well to the power and supernatural capabilities found in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Faith in His name is what had wrought that miracle that day. Not some power found within those men. A lot of people, uh, when they're sick, they say, Oh, if I could only get to a Benny Hinn meeting. If I could only get to this meeting or to that person's meeting. As though by some power of their own or by some holiness within them, they were able to perform miracles. But honey, it is not necessary that you get anywhere. It is necessary that you understand the power that is found in the name. Hallelujah. Because it's His name through faith in His name. Peter and John said that you now see this lame man leaping and running and walking among you. Hallelujah. Oh, it's sad that people who call themselves Christians think that they need to, to find their way to some personality within the church, that they need to find their self, uh, they need to find a way to some celebrity within the Christian movement if they are to receive the miracle they need. No, you need to find your way to faith in His name. Hallelujah. It's faith in His name. Peter and John said that brought about this miracle. As that man stood, excuse me, was laid out by the gate of the temple that is called Beautiful, Peter and John began to make their way into the temple. And they looked at this poor man. He is dysfunctional. He's not able to walk in ancient civilizations, in ancient societies. People with disabilities and people with handicaps uh, were relegated to the poorest of the poor. They had no way in the world of receiving an income or getting any kind of help except through the kindness and the generosity and the compassion and charity of strangers. Well, thank God that the law of Moses... Thank God that the law which God ordained for the people of God, Israel, thank God His law demanded, listen to me children, that there be provision made for the pauper. That there be provision made for those who were unable to work and who were unable to function and who were unable to be productive. We have people in our country today who call themselves uh, the bastions of holiness. They call themselves today representatives of the Judeo-Christian ethic. And I'm telling you today, without any fear of uh, being rebuked by God or being contradicted by His Word. They are liars, they are deceivers, and they are frauds. Amen. Because if they represented God, then they would understand that God Himself 
designed a government and a way to govern. When he was leading through Moses, the people of Israel, into the uh, promised land of Canaan, God gave Moses the law. And the law was a combination of spiritual principles and spiritual ideals and spiritual laws and mandates as well as secular laws and secular mandates. And I've got news for you today, my friend. The Republican in America today no more embraces God's law than they embrace leprosy, yep. than they embrace cancer. They look at God's law with the same disdain and the same disgust and the same distaste that they look upon anything that is harmful and disgusting and foul. That's how they look at the law of God. Mm -hmm. yes. Because God's law said... The workman is worthy of his hire. Don't you dare, don't you dare cheat a workman. God's law said, don't you dare reap the entire harvest. Leave stuff on the vine. Leave stuff on the stalk. Leave stuff in the field so that the poor among you can go in later and they can glean and they can harvest and they'll then be able to eat. The law of God called for compassion upon the stranger, the immigrant, or someone who seeks refuge in your country. The law of God demanded that you receive every stranger as though they were a natural born citizen. This is what God's law mandates. And the law of God says, there's to be no concern for the color of their skin. There's to be no concern for the language that they speak as their primary language. There is to be no concern for the nation from which they come. Listen to me, children. And there is to be no concern for the God that they worship. Oh my goodness. The law of God says that? Yes, it does. Because i got news for you. If you'll follow the law of God, and if you'll do things the way that our God and our Creator and our King mandates it ought to be done, i got news for you. Those strangers will come in, and they'll become a part of our society. They'll come in and become a part of Israel, and they will then embrace the God of Israel because the people of Israel and the God of Israel has embraced them. If America followed a biblical design for government, if the people of God in America followed and uh, sought to establish a genuine government that was in keeping with the design of God's secular government, I want to tell you a little secret. Our country would look a whole lot more Democrat than it does Republican. You can like it or lump it. I don't care whether you like that or hate that. That's a fact. That is a fact. Peter and John are walking into the temple. They see this man lying by the gate that is called beautiful. Unfortunately, they're broke like so many of us often find ourselves, you know. People come to my car at the gas station and at Walmart and ask if I have anything I can give them in the way of money. And I have to look at them honestly and say, I'm so sorry, I don't carry any cash. I don't have any cash. I don't have anything that I can give them. Peter and John look at this lame man and immediately their understanding of the power found in the name of Jesus Christ grips them. And they respond to this man and they say, hey there, look at us, look over here a minute. And the man looks and the word of God said he looked with anticipation. He looked expecting to receive something. He didn't know what he's going to get. He didn't get what he thought he was going to get, but he got something better. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, hallelujah, just because my pockets are empty and I don't have any cash on me doesn't mean I don't have something I can give you, hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. 
and immediately that man's legs were strengthened. If you've ever been in a position where you've experienced atrophy and you're not able to use a, uh, a, your legs for a period of time, then you know that uh, they begin to atrophy and the muscles begin to tighten and dry up and they don't function normally. This man had been crippled his whole life. Surely his legs were about as worthless as legs could be. And yet, all of a sudden, this man was motivated to jump up on his feet. And he began to run, and he began to dance, and he began to rejoice. Because the power of God that is revealed through faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ touched him. And immediately people going into the temple, immediately they begin to look at Peter and John and say, Oh my, we have miracle workers in the midst of us. And Peter and John knew they were obligated to respond. Anybody in Pentecostal ministry that does not turn your attention from themselves to Jesus upon the occasion of any miracle or any divine action is doing the gospel of Jesus Christ a disservice. The attention is not to be on Benny Hinn. The attention is not to be on Jimmy Swagger. The attention is not to be on the preacher, but the attention ought always to be redirected toward that one whom we preach. Amen. Peter and John began to preach Jesus as the fulfillment of God's promise for a Messiah. They began to preach His crucifixion, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. And they finished off their little sermon with the declaration that it's His name, through faith in His name that hath made this man whole, hallelujah, that you now see walking who could not before walk. I'm going to tell you there are a lot of movements from the beginning of the church age to this present time that have done everything in their power to minimize the importance of the name of Jesus. The early Roman Catholic Church went out of its way to try and take the name of Jesus out of the gospel. This is why in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea, the Nicene Creed replaced the name of Jesus in the waters of baptism with the Trinitarian formula in the name, using the words, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And I've got news for you today. Uh, saying in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost says nothing because uh, Father is not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. My father, when I was a kid, sometimes would say, Son, do this or do that. He was not calling my name. He was referring to me by title. It is a title that references the specific relationship that he and I had. Hello now. So using the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is not at all even remotely beginning to use the name of anything because none of those words are names. They are titles. name of Jesus Christ today is a point of absolute obsession for those of us who are Pentecostal by experience. Those of us today who are part of that sacred fraternity, the one God apostolic Holy Ghost baptized, tongue talking, Jesus name church. There's a reason why the apostolic church is also referred to as the Jesus name church. We are obsessed with the name. Why is the name of Jesus Christ of such great importance to us? 
And why do we seem to have an obsession surrounding this name? I'll tell you why. Firstly, this afternoon, the name of Jesus is a divinely authored, divinely revealed name. It is not a name that man chose, but rather it is a name that God himself assigned to the Redeemer, to the Messiah, to the Christ, to the Promised One, to the Anointed One, to the Saving One. In Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 23, we know this from Christmas time. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded or advised to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Did you hear that today? And thou shalt call his name Jesus. This name is divinely assigned. Why? Will you call his name Jesus? You see, you've got to read this in context today, folks. For thou shalt call his name Jesus, colon, for he shall save his people from their sins. You're calling him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So that tells me that the name Jesus has something to do with the salvation of his people, Israel. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. The angel spoke to Joseph, told him things that very few men could hear and believe. Come on now. Hey, your espoused wife, that young lady that you're engaged to, is pregnant, but the child within her is, is conceived of the Holy Ghost. And long before you could tell the gender of a baby before it's born, this angel told Joseph it's going to be a boy. you got to think about that for a minute. Long before you could ever be told the gender of a child before they're born. See, back in those days, right up until uh, my baby brother Dallas was born practically in the 70s, you couldn't really know the gender of a baby before they were born, uh, most often. Uh, nowadays, of course, they have ultrasound and other tests they're able to tell you. But back in the day, you couldn't know. For this angel to tell Joseph, number one, the baby is conceived of the Holy Ghost. Yes, the father of that baby is the Spirit of God. And number two, it's going to be a boy. Now, what would have happened if... Mary then had given birth to a little girl instead of a little boy. Well, that would have blown everything the angel told Joseph right out of the water, wouldn't it? He said, it's going to be a little boy. And then thirdly, he said, and here's the name that you are to assign to that baby. Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sin. There is a marriage between the name Jesus and the purpose of salvation. 
The name Jesus literally is translated, Jehovah is become salvation. It is the revealed name of God, listen to me children, to the human race. Jehovah was the name that God used to identify himself and to reveal himself. Listen to me children, don't be distracted. That is the name God used to reveal himself to the nation of Israel. Rail. He said, by this name shall you know me. He was talking to Moses. He was speaking through Moses as a prophet to the nation of Israel. He said, Israel will always know me as Jehovah. But listen to me, children. But the name of Jesus is the name that God has used to reveal himself to the human race. Not just to the nation of Israel, but to the whole of all humanity. And the name Jesus requires first, listen to me children, I want you to pay, Tommy put your phone down a minute, I want you to pay attention. You got to understand this. The name Jesus requires that you first understand that God revealed himself to Israel as Jehovah because the name Jesus includes within its definition the name Jehovah. Just like Jehovah Jireh, God my provider, Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. Jesus means Jehovah is become my Savior, is become our Savior. Well, that's important, the angel said. You'll call his name Jesus. Why? Because he shall save his people from their sin. Who's he? Well, the name means Jehovah is become our Savior. So who is he? Jehovah. Jehovah is become our Savior. Do you follow what I'm telling you today? Amen. But now listen, he goes on. The Word of God goes on in, in uh, Matthew chapter 1, verses number 22 and 23. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord, Jehovah, by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So there you have further confirmation of the identity of this baby. You're going to call his name Jesus because why? Because he is Jehovah become salvation. But all this was done, why? To fulfill what the prophet said. What Jehovah God said through the prophet that this child would be born of a virgin and that he would be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted is what? God with us. So back to back you have two statements which identify this child as the Almighty revealed in human form. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Why is this name of such great importance to us? Why do we seem to be so obsessed with this name? Because the name Jesus literally means Jehovah is become salvation because the name Jesus is God's revealed name to the entirety of humanity not merely not only to the nation of Israel in Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11 let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now the Jehovah's have come along and they've tried to say who being in the form of a God 
thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Well, if he were in the form of a God, first of all, that would contradict Scripture because God said there was no God formed before me, neither will there be after me. Secondly, Satan was cast out of heaven for what reason? Because Satan said, I can be equal with God. God, am I telling the truth? So if Jesus, being in the form of, quote, a God, according to J.W.'s, if he felt that it was not robbery to be equal with God, then he was literally thinking like Lucifer himself. And he was literally thinking the thought that caused Lucifer's downfall. So we know that cannot be true. Who, being in the form of God, not a God, not the Son of God, not the second person of the divine trinity, but in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He said, I could go to earth as God. But, biggest word in the word of God is but, B-U-T. But made himself of no reputation. And took upon him, he was not given a form, he took upon himself the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God, the Spirit of Almighty God also, hath highly exalted Him, listen, and given Him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh my goodness. Jesus, Jehovah our Savior is the name by which all the world will one day confess Him to be Lord of all. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 43 and verse 11, the Spirit of Almighty God, the Spirit of Jehovah God, spoke through the prophet Isaiah and declared, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. In Isaiah 45 verse 21, Jehovah God declares through the prophet Isaiah, Tell ye, and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. The Lord God Jehovah declared through the prophet Hosea in Hosea 13 and verse 4, Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. God made it abundantly clear throughout the Old Testament that Savior is, and God, that He and Savior were one and the same. He would not send a Savior. He would not create a Savior. He would not uh, send forth a Savior. That rather He alone would be the Savior. He said, I am God, and beside me there is no God. So that solves that problem. Number two. I am your Savior, and beside me there is no Savior. So we understand that the name Jesus, Jehovah, is become our Savior. Literally means Jehovah God in human form has become our Savior. Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation.
and humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. God, Jehovah God, became the humble man, Jesus, so that he could go to the cross to be our Savior. Hallelujah. Why are we so obsessed with the name Jesus? I'll tell you why. Because we in the apostolic faith understand who Jesus is. We sing that old song, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. He's more than just a story. He is the King of glory. I'm glad I know who Jesus is. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Luke chapter 1, verses 30 through 33, again we read prior to the birth of this man Jesus, this child Jesus, and the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. See, now the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Now we read the account of the angel appearing to Mary. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. Again, a prediction of the gender. And shalt call his name Jesus. There was to be no mistake. God revealed this name to both Mary and to Joseph. The two who would sit on earth as this child's parents were both advised individually prior to the birth of the child. This is the name this child is to be called. Why? Because this name is a revelation of God to all of humanity. Not just to Israel, but to all the world. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. Meaning, they will call him the Son of God. They will say, this man was born of God. He has no earthly father. The only father he has is the Spirit of Almighty God. Shall be called the Son of the Highest. Listen. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Now listen. And he, who's he? Jesus, shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Oh my goodness. Of his kingdom there shall be no end. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. In case you still don't get who Jesus is. In case you still don't get why we're obsessed with the name Jesus. That it reveals Jehovah God as Savior of the world. Listen to this prophetic word spoken by David the psalmist. In Psalm 132 verse 11. The Lord hath sworn in truth unto David. He will not turn from it. Of the fruit of of thy body will I, who's I? The Lord. Who's the Lord? Jehovah. Of the fruit of thy body will I set upon thy throne. Jehovah is become salvation. Jesus is Jehovah become salvation. He shall sit upon the throne of his father who? David. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, honey, you got to be pretty ignorant. you got to be pretty foolish not to be able to see and understand that God has revealed himself in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in revealing himself in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, he has given him a name which is above every name. Every name. It is above Buddha. It is above Muhammad. It is above Allah. It is above Jehovah. Hallelujah. It is above every name. There are no exceptions. It is a name that God has given which is above every name. Hallelujah. 
Every name he even goes on to explain in heaven and on earth and of things under the earth. So the name Jesus is more powerful in Revelation than even the name Jehovah. The Old Testament name of our God has been enhanced by the person of the Lord Jesus Christ because Jehovah God took on flesh and blood to become salvation. Thus, He literally embodies and gives life to the meaning of the name Jesus. John chapter 16, verse, I got a lot of scripture. I'm trying to get through it today. John chapter 16, 23 through 24. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So Jesus says, if you're going to ask God for anything, you're going to have to go to Him. How? In my name. You ask in my name, you're going to get it. Oh my goodness, you wonder why I'm obsessed with the name Jesus? Because the name Jesus is the key that unlocks every door in heaven. Hallelujah. Every resource that heaven has to offer is opened and made available to us through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Now listen, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Well, of course they asked nothing in his name prior to the Lord's arrival because nobody, the name Jesus had not been assigned to God. Nobody was calling the name Jesus. They were using the old name Jehovah. He said, hitherto ye have asked nothing in my name. The name had not yet been revealed. The name had not yet been given. He said, hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive. That your joy may be full. You wonder why I'm obsessed with the name Jesus? Oh my goodness. Mark chapter 16 verses 15 through 18. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. In my name. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. Hallelujah. In my name they shall take up serpents. In my name if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. In my name they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Are you still wondering why we're obsessed with the name Jesus? In His name. He's given us His name. In His name is the revelation of God. In His name is salvation. In His name there's healing. In His name there's deliverance from demonic powers. My goodness, have mercy. You wonder why? You wonder why we're obsessed with His name? Luke chapter 10 verse 17. The disciples... At this point, the Lord had some 70 followers, not just 12. There were 12 whom he named as apostles, disciples that were to become apostles. But there were more than that that actually were disciples of his. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. Through thy name, hallelujah, even while Jesus the man was still walking planet earth. Oh my goodness. His disciples could go out and be away from him, not be anywhere near him, and use his name, and demons were subject unto them through his name. And you wonder why we're obsessed with the name Jesus. <laughs> 
If you're not obsessed with the name Jesus, you don't know who Jesus is. Trust me, I don't care if you go to a church that uses the name, talks the name, uses the name every time they pray. If you're not obsessed with the name, believe me, you don't get it. You don't understand this thing. In John chapter 20, verses 30 through 31, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, meaning in the, the uh, gospel account of John the Apostle. He goes on to say, But these things are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, meaning the Messiah, the Son of God, meaning God manifest in human form, and that believing ye might have life through His name. You wonder why we're obsessed with the name of Jesus? Because life comes through His name. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus is the only name that is able to to save. Why? Because the name Jesus means Jehovah has become salvation. Because the name Jesus reveals God, Jehovah God, as our Savior. Jesus Christ was the embodiment of Jehovah God as our Savior. For that purpose, the name of Jesus is the only name that can be spoken on earth that is capable of bringing salvation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Why? Because I am the physical manifestation of the Father. I am the pathway that one must travel in the flesh to see the Spirit. If you expect to understand God the Spirit, then you must first understand God the Son, who is the manifestation, the physical manifestation of the Spirit of Almighty God. You're a human being. You're in flesh and blood form. You cannot possibly understand God, but you can understand me. Because why? Because I've humbled myself and became obedient unto the de death, even the death of the cross. I humbled myself and took upon myself the form of a servant. You can understand me. I made every effort so that you could understand me. I made every effort so that I could reveal myself to you on a plane and on the level that you could understand and you could digest. Colossians chapter, excuse me, in John chapter 1, verses 12 through 13, the Word of God said, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. There's salvation in the name Jesus. Furthermore, there is salvation in no other name but Jesus. Colossians 3.17 The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Coloss, And whatsoever ye do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Tommy, he didn't say one word about do anything in the name of Jehovah. He did not say to preach in the name of Jehovah. He didn't say to sing in the name of Jehovah. He didn't say do one single thing. He said whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do it all. And he is so specific in the name of the Lord Jesus. You wonder why we're obsessed with the name? You wonder why we baptize in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't use the words, the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I'll tell you why. 
because the word of God tells us whatsoever ye do in word or deed do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him why do we baptize in Jesus' name? Because salvation is found in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is found in the name of Jesus. Healing is found in the name of Jesus. God says anything you ask in that name, He will give us. Why do we baptize in Jesus' name? I'll tell you why. Because in Acts 2, verses 36 through 39... Peter preaching on the day of Pentecost, he's sewing up his sermon. He said, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. If you want to accuse me today of being obsessed with the name, go right on ahead. I'll, I'll own it. Amen. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm proud to be obsessed with the name. You know why? Because I get it. Hallelujah. I've got the revelation. God's revealed Himself to me. God has opened His Word to me by the Holy Ghost. See, you can read the Bible and never understand the word you read unless the Spirit of Almighty God is working with you. Unless the author and the finisher of the book is helping you to understand what He wrote. Hallelujah. The Word of God said, You have no need that any man teach you, but the anointing, meaning the presence, which ye have received of Him. The presence of God, the anointing of God, the presence of the Holy Ghost in our lives shall teach you all things and is truth and is not a lie. My, we're told that we don't need any man to teach us that the Spirit of God will teach us. And what the Spirit of God teaches us is true and is not a lie. But we've got the Mormons tell us you need them. we got the Jehovah's telling you we need them. we got the Catholics telling you you need the Pope we, and the bishops. Uh, we got all these groups and all these organizations that try to tell you you cannot find truth outside of us. You need us to guide you. You need us to help you. i got news for you, honey. That is in direct contradiction to what the Word of God tells us. When the Apostle Paul was converted on the road to Damascus, Paul tells us that for three years following his conversion, he went into isolation. He did not go to the Apostles in Jerusalem. He did not go to any church or any body of believers. He literally isolated himself and sought God. He had already received the baptism of the Holy Ghost under the ministry of Ananias. He had already received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and now he went into isolation for three years. And Paul was able to tell us things that he said the Spirit of the Lord showed him that are confirmed elsewhere in the Word of God. And yet Paul said, nobody told me this. When he tells us about the Lord's Supper, when he tells us about what happened on the night the Lord was betrayed, he said, I received of the Lord. That which I deliver unto you. He said, I'm telling you what God told me. On the same night as he was betrayed, he took the cup. He tells us exactly what the others have told us. Do you follow what I'm telling you? But Paul got that from God. Because he said, the word of the Lord said, you don't need any man to teach you. The Holy Ghost will teach you. The Spirit of God will teach you. And is no lie and is the truth. Oh, I want to tell you today, why are we obsessed with the name Jesus? Because there is no more potent, powerful truth than is encapsulated in the name Jesus. 
There is no more powerful resource made available to the church than the name of Jesus. And there is salvation in none other. Salvation only is wrought through the power of Jesus' name. There's no name given among men under heaven whereby you must be saved. The name Jesus is in the apostles' salvation plan. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm closing right now. Go into the Word of God, folks. Read the book of Acts. You will read over and over again, over and over again, of accounts of individuals being baptized in Jesus' name. You will not one time read where the words Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were ever spoken over any individual baptized in the Word of God. Never happened. That didn't even begin to become part of the Christian world until 325 years into the Christian common era, into the fourth century. Oh, I want to tell you today, I'm obsessed with the name. This name is a name which is above every name. It means so much to me. It unlocks heaven for me. Hallelujah. And today I proudly proclaim, yes, hallelujah, I'm obsessed with the name. Glory to God. Amen. amen. If you'll stand with me today, I'm done. I hope.